What's up guys, welcome back to VIX Vehicles. In part one of this series, I introduced the E30 and all of the maintenance and repair it needed. In this video, I'll show you how I pulled a motor, which will make all of the engine and transmission maintenance a lot easier to perform. This was actually my first time ever pulling a motor, but with the help of a few friends, it wasn't too difficult. Just really time consuming to remove all of the wiring, hoses, and connections. Some of the following steps may be out of order, or I might be missing some video footage, but it is a general guideline on what to do to remove the M20 engine from this E30. In all, it took about two full days of work for a first timer like me to remove it. Probably shouldn't use my hand. So what I found is if you want to mark the sensors, you can wrap this with like, I don't know which sensor this is. Sweet. <laughs> what size is that over there? What? What size is that? Ten. It's good progress so far. Yeah. Bro, it's like dripping oil. <laughs> <laughs> so for the throttle body, we had uh, four screws. One, two, three, four. Uh, once you get that out, this is loose. And then we can just disconnect the remainder of these uh, hoses, vacuum lines, throttle cable, etc. And then this will be loose. This one. So this was up here. You just use some pliers and clip it. You're probably going to have to replace everything because they break easy because they're old. But this back one went up here. Yeah. Aha. Good. And then do you want to label this? Never could work. What the sh
So we, <laughs> are you narrating it or not? <laughs> so uh, we just disconnected the power steering pump from the engine. All you have to do is remove three bolts. Um, and then we cut the belt for ease of access and then pretty simple. Now we're removing the clutch slave cylinder. Uh, there's two 13 millimeter bolts and then um, when you look at it, you'll see that, can you move your hand for a second? Uh, so there's one on, not on the bottom that's very easy to remove, but then the one on top, you have to kind of rig some socket extension thing to get to it. It's very difficult, but we're going to try and get this out. So now we're going to drain the gas tank and underneath you do have a drain bolt. It uses a T30 star head. So uh, let's go ahead and get this drained. Oh, so when you just crack it open, it already starts leaking. So. This is going to come out fast. Uh, get me a paper towel. I'm kind of covered in gasoline. Actually, you know what? This might fill up. I said check it for the yeah. <laughs> Maybe empty it as we go. This was one of the main coolant hoses we just pulled out. And then just looking at it from the outside, you'd think it looks fine. But when we pulled it out and drained the coolant, I mean, you can see how much like black rubber is coming out. This hose is just disintegrating from the inside out. So I suggest replacing any hoses you can um, because these 30 year old hoses are definitely in need of replacement. Okay, so we have the engine hoist in place, our Harbor Freight load leveler, got the change attached. Now all we gotta do is uh, start pulling. So here are the transmission mounts. Um, they're pretty nasty. The rubber is kind of just disintegrating right in my hand. Um, basically all the rubber parts in this car need replacement. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure all that is refreshed once we pull the motor. Oh, we're almost free. So there was that engine mount bracket right there. So that engine mount bracket that was attached right there, we ended up taking it out on one side. Um, it was kind of stuck. But once we did that and started lifting it just a little bit, um, you can see that this side uh, broke free. Now we're just going to keep on uh, jacking it up little by little and try to get this engine out. And then we did have this um, jack under here supporting a transmission while we were unbolting it. Um, but now some clearance going on there. So transmission is free, uh, engine's free, so let's just keep on jacking this up 